You're good. What's going on guys? Welcome to the Dunlap Motorcycle Track Walk. And look, we had you guys involved in a major voting process to see who's gonna join us to really get some inside scoop action here in Glendale. And now, I think it's time for us to figure out who you guys voted for. Mr. Brock Glover. Well, we had Carson Brown. Hey, hot off a sixth place finish last week in Anaheim ooh, too. Ooh, wow, ooh, that's crazy. Ooh. And Josh Hill, our legendary Past Supercross Premier Class 450 winner, Minneapolis, I believe yeah. it was. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> and plus just so you're just so fun to watch on social media. You got a lot of followers, man. Both of you guys have crazy amount of followers, and uh, I think uh, we got to announce the winner here. Uh, what did you say? You said one thing about Carson's followers. He doesn't have as many, but he's got some loyal followers. Loyal <laughs> followers. Hey, cool so do you. Yeah, 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 you guys are good. So this is the first time these guys are going to find out who the winner is. And speaking of talent. Speaking of our America's Got Talent star, <laughs> what season 14, I think you were? Yes, sir. Yes, I was sir. listening to your, one of your songs, Footprint, and, and I wanted, I think that first verse, I think, can you break into that first verse and so we can... Yeah, yeah, there, there's parts in the first part of the song where I say, you know, your heart will tell you when it's time to move. Just ask yeah. yourself yeah. what you got to lose. Because when it storms, when it rains, it falls on all of us the same. But after today, the world will know my name. And the name of the winner of who we voted for is Carson. Oh, uh, Carson. <laughs> it was Carson. Congratulations. Yeah, it was very close, everybody. Thank you for participating. This was a lot of fun. We get to Yeah, there was a lot of voters. Yeah, there was a lot of voters, and it was less than 10% difference separated Carson. But you do have some loyal followers. You don't have as many, but you do. But tonight, hey, coming off of a sixth-place finish, maybe that helped you out, too. But we're going to walk the track. And thank you, Josh, for participating. And great good luck tonight, brother. And I hope good that job. thing in the main. All right. All right, you guys. Well, let's, let's start right over here because yeah. check this out. I mean, Carson, give us your thoughts on... I, this is, you know, we always talk about being on the in the doghouse or next to the doghouse in Supercross just to give you that extra, you know, maybe two or three feet of elbow room. But man, this is the world's biggest doghouse. It reminds me of that cartoon where Clifford the Big Red Dog, I think Clifford could fit in this doghouse, but we got 30 feet separating this gate and that gate. So yeah. as a rider, when you come out of here, like, if you're near this doghouse, would, would, is this a gate you'd like to have to get some extra elbow room? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it makes it so that nobody's getting cut over on you. You have a lot of room to cut over um, and get a good run for a start, especially if you start on the right side here, um, going from the outside in to the corner, especially since going into that first rhythm, there's a few options to do, so that'll be nice. Well, speaking of long starts, we're going to get a peek at it out here. And, uh, Joseph, I think you got some stats here. I mean... This yeah. is truly, this is truly the granddaddy uh, stadium of all the stadium Supercross tracks. This is the one everybody just loves because it's the biggest footprint and the starting line's the longest. How, how long, is Joseph, is the, is the starting line here? Yes. Yeah, so this start straight right here in Glendale is 510 feet long. They fully take advantage of the floor space they have. Man, that's some serious speed when you're on a 450. Or, <laughs> well, the 250s nowadays are so fast anyhow, it doesn't even matter. I mean, are you tapped out, Carson, on this start? What, what kind of what gear are you going to be in that's going in that corner? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to think that we're going to at least be in fourth going down this, and especially Ooh. going over the tunnel and going through here, we're going to be hitting some pretty high speeds, especially for Supercross. So yeah, you I don't mean, normally see that. Yeah, we have old school tunnel here, over under tunnel, and it comes right over the top of the starting line there. So as Carson mentioned, you're already going to be grabbing, you know, second or third gear by the time you come downside there, jump out onto this little kicker on the start. So you're you're going to be going faster during the race than you would even off the starting. Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, how it all shapes up. And this might get a little bit rough in here too. You think um, so? As it goes, since there's that single coming out of there. So Whoa, yeah. maybe get a little couple bumps, but I just, I just love it. To me, I, I grew up as a kid watching Supercross on the original old tracks and, and some of the early tracks before my time, believe it or not, there was Supercross before my time. But I watched tracks like the Houston Astrodome and things where they had the starting line similar to this, 
where they would just make a corner. They'd put a stack of tires on a, on a post, and, and that's the riders just went around that. It seemed kind of basic, but in reality, it really offered fantastic racing, and this is the same. You can see speed at this track, even from up in the stands. You see a lot of speed and a lot of passing where people and riders are jockeying in and out, trying to figure out if they can set up a rider for an inside out or outside in pass some block passing going into that corner and it's just uh it's a it's a hot I, I just love this track yeah another thing to note here too is typically during our first few practices it can be a little bit slick uh because they overwater it a bit because the dirt here gets so hard packed later on in the day so if that'll be interesting i know that the amateurs are riding before us so it might shape up uh, a bit differently than it usually does in glendale well, yeah you're talking about stuff like this yes yeah so this right here, as they start, go ahead. As they, as they start turning, this right here might cause riders to slide out. You think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It definitely is just a lot more slick than, like, say, Anaheim usually is. So it's uh, it's definitely different, and a lot of guys are probably going to be running different tire pressure. Yeah, and speaking of tires, I mean, this was the this was the site of Blake Baggett's first Supercross 450 win. I believe it might be his only, actually. But um, one of the things talking about tires that we found at Dunlop was that. The riders at that time were kind of experimenting with running the, a newer, little larger rear tire called the 120 90 19. Well, the tire, even though as you can see from traditional one tour, you can uh, imagine from a 120 80 versus a 120 90. The 90 is a little larger tire, but it's not so much width as it is actually, it's a little taller, but it front to back has a little longer footprint. So that longer footprint allows for more traction. And that night, the whole entire podium was running the 120-90 tire. And so it clearly made more traction, you know, at this hard packed slippery surface here in Glendale. So and why do you think that made more traction with that tire? Well it just had a little longer footprint forward and back and it also had a little wider, just a couple of millimeters wider, but forward and back is about seven or eight millimeters. So it gives Whoa. just more traction. Those four fifties got all that power, they gotta get it to the ground somehow. So coming out of this big wide first corner right here, Carson. Yeah, what do you see right now in, in coming off of this corner? Little, little yeah. Bump and a, is that a rhythm? Yeah, luckily yesterday I was fortunate enough to ride press day and a lot of guys were going outside, kind of wheeling over that bump and then tripling onto the table, jumping off and then jumping table over single. Um, another line was coming inside, jumping over this first single, jumping over the table and then step on, step off. So it does get some good options and they were actually pretty close. Yeah, we can see over there, obviously, Chase Sexton's lining up his look. We see uh, the Honda camp, the Honda team over there with uh, team manager Lars Lindstrom. And it uh, looks like, uh, what is that, uh, Supercross champion Johnny O'Mara over there working with the Lawrence brothers. So you can see Hunter Lawrence and the whole team in red over here checking things out. Yeah, but it's good to see a guy like Johnny O'Mara having his, you know, still being relevant and coaching the riders and, and still still involved in the sport. <laughs> Somebody that remembers my era. Hey, Johnny, what's up, buddy? <laughs> the legend. Yeah, that's I guess, right? <laughs> old school, baby, old school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, man? Uh... Yeah, you'd, you'd like this track growing up in Southern California, Simi Valley and all that area up in the, in the valley there. Yeah, what's... Uh... <laughs> hey, we're talking about motocross, supercross tracks. Right? These guys are talking about shoes. I mean, hey, you know, it's a high, it's all high about pressure. traction. These shoes were trying to be similar to Dunlop, you know, with the grip on you the bottom. You got it. Like, clumping up. Yeah. You know, like, that's why I like went to the side deal there. Yeah, we have to cut around a little bit here. This looks a little muddy here. So, what's, what's your thoughts and what did, uh, you know, you into the riders give you some feedback on the track? Yeah, because I was here for uh, press yesterday, so I saw the guys kind of feel it out, minus a couple lanes. But yeah. Yeah, we kind of had dissected a little bit by watching that what the guys can do and what they can't do and, mm -hmm. and then we'll throw in the other rhythm sections in there and then the whoops so yeah yeah it should be good racing for sure it's, yeah it's just stadium's always big so uh, and then the triple crown it's always going to make it interesting yeah that's the one thing yeah. too we have supercross futures and johnny referenced that supercross futures uh they got to ride the whole track 
the teams that rode car mm -hmm. uh, in the Honda riders got to ride, they didn't get to ride the whole track. So it's kind of interesting that they, they only got to see part of it, but they did get to see some of the future riders and, and ride in the whole entire circuit. So yeah, like Good. I stayed stayed after and watched the futures do the whole track. So yeah. Yep. See it a little bit more realistic. See, that's why Johnny's riders get towards the top, yeah. man. That's why, <laughs> he's know, got a time, whatever. Yeah, you we'll got it. D, tearing it apart, yeah. you know, pull that back. Yeah. And, you know, plus or minus a few seconds. So. Yeah, this yeah. track is a 2,550 feet, Joseph. That's yeah. what I think it is. Oh, yeah. We've got 2,550. It's about 100 feet longer. 100 feet longer than your traditional Supercross track because of the bigger footprint here. But with the higher speeds, we're kind of thinking the lap times are going to be around the one minute similar. mark. I mean, yeah, I didn't. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, the, the longer track, but higher speed. She's going to, you know, kind of balance it out. So we'll see what happens. Well, good luck yeah, tonight thanks, with the whole yeah, program. And Hunter, me, boys. you got it's it. Good night, thanks. Man. Awesome. That's uh, always fun to, fun to give a. Johnny was one of the best, smoothest riders out there, you know, during my era. And then he's been involved in the sport for so long he's still working with the current rider so he gets it from both angles there wow. yeah this is kind of a fun section going through here kind of a little step up going into the triple uh -huh. gives you some good momentum and i think what's nice about this is the corners are big enough that it's not gonna you know have one rut going through each of these um since they had room to not make the corners like super tight so that'll be nice to have some different line choices as the night goes on i have a question i mean right here to me when i look at this section this little jump right here, it's not that little. It's a good three yeah, feet high. Yeah, it's a nice little step yeah. up But the, right pocket, here. the pocket between this and the face of this big double seems pretty tight. Like, yeah. you didn't have a problem getting on your 250, getting enough lift to clear that? There's no worries. Yeah, you know, it wasn't too bad because uh, this isn't super steep. So we were able to kind of scrub over it. A lot of guys were actually scrubbing too low and clipping that since oh. this is such a short face so yeah. oh. um, that's going to be tricky as the night goes on trying to find speed but also not making mistakes like that I, honestly from when i watched it this is i walked a lot of the track i watched a lot of practice yesterday at press day and the futures practice but this i didn't realize how close this was you guys were making it look a little easier than yeah. I, I like for me when i looked at it, i was thinking this is pretty tight because that jump out there is a long way so. right all right well let's cut over to the side because it is pretty muddy we might just do a header yeah yeah the first riders on the track it'd be tricky for them <laughs> i think a rodeo broke out out here we got a cowboy up ahead up here i don't know <laughs> familiar the familiar cowboy hat of uh, Aaron Plessinger there. It's always cool. I love that he runs that. He's got his cowboy boots on. He's got his cowboy hat on. Easy to spot on the track walk. Besides the fact he's about six foot two. All right, so do you think this track's going to get super rutted? I think that it's probably the ruts that it does form are going to kind of be notchy because there is a little bit of rock in this dirt and being so hard pack, it's probably going to cup out a bit. Yeah. Um, but typically here, it doesn't get like pockets or anything in between the rhythms like you would uh, normally see. So yeah. that kind of makes it nice for the guys who like hard pack tracks. Um, guys like Chris Blows, Arizona, you know, he's, he's going to be really good here because he's used to this type of dirt. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to just kind of scan over and see the jump you right here face of this jump so you can come up can you get up on top of that jump hit this triple right here and uh go all the way over to the, where we saw Aaron Pleasanger's kind of dis off the K KTM team off in the 180 bowl come back into a rhythm section lots of combos right here did you uh this section right here they were you guys did not get to ride yeah this they weren't letting us ride this yeah. and this give you one of the longest rhythms I probably have ever ridden. Yeah. Long one. Like yeah. 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 <laughs> this this is we talked about the starting line being five hundred and ten feet. And this rhythm section is the one eighty bowl that makes the inside of the first corner. So the, the rhythm section continues all the way down and it stops right about the gate. So my guess is it's probably about four hundred and seventy five feet yeah. of rhythm section. I, I don't, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm, some of the fans out there might correct me or people, but someone's got uh, a question here. This they're, could they're be asking, the longest rhythm section I've ever seen. Someone's asking what the tire difference is on a 250 versus 450 here. Oh, good. That's a great question. Yeah, 250s tend to run the 11090 rear size tire, and then the 450s use the 12080 or 12090. 
90. And the 120-90, you, like we mentioned years back when Glendale was kind of the first place we really started racing it, and now it's become the tire of choice. Very few riders do not run the 120 90 now so it's uh it's been in full development you know readily available in production tires and 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 it's just something that i personally on my own bike when i ride 450s that's the size that i run too i i prefer that tire it's a little bit more uh bump absorption but it also to me just offers a little more traction so it's a that's a good question though but hey there are a couple of guys on when this track right yeah. here, I, it won't surprise me if we, at the Dunlop truck, if we don't have some 250 guys coming over asking for 120s because it is going to be slippery. Yeah, it can a little more, more track. Yeah, a little more hard pack. Uh, uh, when tracks get real rutted, some of the riders tend to want to stay with a little smaller tire so that it's not catching on the edge of the rut. But this track at firm base, uh, I do not see it getting very rutted. So the 120.90s and 120.80s might end up on some 250s tonight too. We'll see what happens. So. So let's work our way. I don't know, Joseph, this is long. I, I, the, the future riders, I will say, the future riders, obviously they're not quite at the level that the pro riders are, right. but they struggled mightily yeah, in this yeah, section this, yesterday. This we, section, I think it's tricky because of trying to memorize your rhythm. Like the futures riders, even rider Di Francesco, as he was coming through, just started off doubling through a lot of it. Didn't start throwing triples into the rhythm until later on through the section. So I'm interested to see if any of the, the riders we'll see tonight in tonight's show will start throwing triples triples or anything of the sort earlier in the section rather than later what do you think what do you think the rhythm through here will be yeah i mean i i believe the the real fast guys are gonna find the rhythm pretty quickly i mean even after track walk um but i think most of the way through we're probably gonna be tripling but like you said it, it could be easy to get lost in this rhythm um yeah. especially where you are because these aren't all the same size or anything so it's gonna yeah. make it interesting yeah hey, carson brown i'm gonna put you on the spot how many rhythm how many jumps rhythm bumps are there here <laughs> did you uh, count them i didn't count them but i'm <laughs> guessing about 13. yeah oh god i did count them from what i can see it's 13. yeah so i think you got that one just right and to be honest right. with you I, yeah so i can, yeah for me for sure i would lose track all the way through there so good, good on you carson for knowing how many yeah Because this is uh this is something else. We're gonna have to head over here. <laughs> yeah, so the long, long rhythm section here. This is a quite quite an incredible uh, incredible run here. It's the track builders are it, it, you know the mixture of mixture of heights too. I mean some of these look about three to four footers, some of them maybe almost up to four or five feet. So they're all different rhythms and, and it's just uh, it's something else, man. This track, and it leads right into a sand section here. There's been a lot of comments about how the track builders are really changing it up and doing cool stuff this year compared to years past. Yeah, it's funny. You know, occasionally we'll see the keyboard guys in there and, you know, kind of tearing these guys up. But I, I know the crew very well. They, I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world to be overly creative and then just try to do something and find you have to do a balance between building tracks that are unique enough but also using proven you know jumps and obstacles because you don't want to come here and try to do something crazy outside the box and find out it's just a disaster you can't risk that so it's a combination of being creative but also uh, you know just building good tracks that are good for racing good for the fans and this is another example right here we have a dual lane sand track uh, we've seen a lot of action in the sand. Yeah. You know, we saw last week we had a little collision with, obviously with Jason Anderson and, and Ken Roxon. Uh, you know, Jason was a hey, sorry, good on me, but you can see what happens. You know, when that happens, when one of these berms breaks away and it just leads into it, you come around the next lap. Yeah. The berm that was there the lap earlier is not there anymore. And Jason, that's what happened last week. So. It happens, but at least in this particular case right here, you're trying to make a good passing option. And, you know, the inside is obviously the shorter distance. The outside, they don't have these little bumps in the outside so you can carry more speed, which leads on to the jump we talked about earlier. I'm going for the run here. I'm making it. But the point is, this is leading on to the longest, fastest section on the track. This is an exit corner. Extremely important to have good speed coming off of this because that speed will translate all the way down that long starting line. So that's important to have one mile an hour here. It could be five bike lengths at the end. So important to get a great run out of here. Yeah, so. and I don't know if you guys on the camera can see how steep this really is, but you're, you're about see to right see. Now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there we go. The Glover himself. 
Oh, jeez. Bye, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you on the other side. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> I'm going down the edge. Yeah, that is uh, much steeper than the camera makes it. That's crazy there. So my ears popped when I got up there. So that's going to be the best view in the house for the riders. Get up on top. and But again, that's an important exit exit speed section. you got to carry, again, just speed. Just making sure you don't clip the top of that. Because we all know by watching other riders, if you ever clip a jump or you clip you know, an obstacle, it actually does disrupt the bike just slightly and you lose a little bit of speed. So again, Carson, clean that thing every time so you can carry some speed down. Yeah, here, okay? exactly. Don't want to be hanging up on the backside of that thing or else you're gonna be losing a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. On top of on top of losing time, does that also play like a mental factor as well when you have sketchy moments where you know you could like loop out? Yeah. I mean, especially on that, with it being so steep, your timing has to be on point. Yeah, spot and, uh, on. Yeah, you don't want to be clipping that every lap. So a lot of guys, you'll see under jumping and over jumping, especially in practice until yeah. they get that dialed because it's going to be across the face. It's going to get worn down in spots and everything. Yeah. So I really like those uh, those tunnel jumps. It makes it technical. Whoa. Yeah, I like them too, actually, and it just gives another. So flat out, cross the straightaway, almost the full length that we talked about, that 500-foot start. So you're probably doing four, 450 feet, and then you're gonna go into a sharp, sharp right-hand corner right here. A lot of hard braking. You obviously gotta keep your foot on the peg because you need that right foot for your back brake. Almost a 180 here, not quite. Kind of enter at an angle. You're gonna see a lot of rubbing and passing coming into this corner. And then right into your traditional Monster Energy Supercross finish line, but just a beautiful view. I mean, the riders, this is, you talk about foot, you know, or you see football, you know, a guy makes an interception, he's running down there, you see him glance up and go, yeah, baby, there's, but also, you know, they're doing it because they want to see what's going on behind them, yeah. see how close a guy might be pursuing them. Well, Supercross here, too, you can kind of get a little view of that scoreboard. You got time to check it out as a rider. Very That's true. a big old scoreboard. You're going to go, wait, what, you know, maybe they're showing if I'm a leader, he might be showing the guys right behind you or he's not, or you might be able to see the running order or where you are. You know, you do have other pit boards and things, but this is an opportunity for him to glance up at the scoreboard. Yeah, Say hi, mom, or whatever. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That'll definitely be beneficial for a lot of guys during practice, too, because this week with the Triple Crown, you got to be top 18 in practice. And if you're right on that bubble, you're going to be looking at that board the whole time. Yeah, great, great point there. You know, we really haven't talked about the fact that this is our first triple crown of the year. Yeah. And what does that mean? It means, as you said, you got to get yourself into that top 18. And then from there, if you don't make it, they get four from an LCQ. But at that point, you're in. You don't have, everybody else gets gets an early load yeah. up. They're gone on the trailer. They're going to sit that's in the stands intense. with the rest yeah. of all the fans. That's and, and you're going to do three main events. So that's kind of like the old school days when Supercross first started. So, yeah, awesome. you're okay, Mr. Sexton. You can I walk. I don't want to get in your guys' shot. Hey, you can all. You can do it. No, you were. <laughs> we loved you at San Diego. Lining up your, lining up the whoops. Gave us the inside Every there. Weekend. I did it again. No, you <laughs> did. Well, we missed you. All right. So if you guys caught the San Diego Supercross, we happened to get perfect timing. Came around the corner. Chase was lining up the whoops. He looked like to me he was lining up a putt for because <laughs> he's a golfer. And uh, but he was lining up all the heights of the whoop de doos and he was just trying to look for the little slight variable in heights and knowing like maybe the right side or the left side and knowing in his mind that the main line was probably gonna be you know the one that he wanted to do for qualifying, but maybe as the race went on, that would be worn down or cut what we call cupped out. And if that whoopie doos get cupped out, then the riders have to look for an alternative line. And Chase was looking where this, his second choice, third choice would be. So coming off this camelback right here, Mr. Carson Brown, how was this? You got to ride this lap after lap yesterday. Yeah. What'd you think? You know, it looks a lot scarier when you're walking it than when riding it. But yeah. uh, the gap to the bump out here isn't very far and it's really small. So we were actually having to slow down it quite a bit. Uh -huh. um, I was reviewing some footage and a lot of 450 guys were only hitting the first three bumps and skipping the fourth wow. and uh, keeping it a lot lower instead of having to check up on this last one. So that's uh, definitely something to keep note of and I think most of the fast guys are going to be doing that today. Right, so right where Alex Martin is, that's 
That's number two where Alex is, and number three is this one. So you're saying they're hitting the third one yeah, and, and jumping over. over the high one because the high one sends you too high. This one get down low. <laughs> Almost slid out I know, there. it's hard to walk this track, let alone race it. But yeah, so that's, you know, that's the little secret. The faster you go, then they start looking at ways to not be jumping. We're mere mortals like ourselves. We would try to... Uh, yeah, I saw try, a few of the riders. Yeah. Of the yeah. three of the whoops and skipping over. Yeah, yeah, that's what Carson was just saying. So we're right into this 180 here, this Dunlop Bowl corner. Hopefully those tough blocks don't don't need to be used too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that thing is talking about. It's like the first time I ever went to the Daytona Motor Speedway. Like oh. Daytona International Speedway is the same thing where you get on this bank. You don't realize how darn steep that thing is. That's uh, tire marks all the way on the yeah, top oh man. of this thing. Yikes! That's a little. That's uh, that's playing with the edge there for me. <laughs> that thing give away you going down. So here to me was one of the most interesting sections in the entire track. Another long rhythm. This is that three four five combo that you see on the tracks where they build one jump might be they kind of a three footer high. The other one's four, but the the tall ones are five. So they mix it up here. And this was just a crazy amount of different options here. We saw a lot of guys, we're on the first jump right here, hit the second, clear that, and then the fast, couple faster guys that I saw, uh, Justin Barsha, for instance, was he was two, and then he did triple, triple, triple. So you got nine there, and then the two here is 11, so you got 11 of these in a row. And then other people, as you saw, what did you also see some different combos where they were doing I saw other ones do almost one and then two. Yeah. And then, but For the 250 guys, um, we were going around, we were tripling and then going two, three. Uh, some guys were going three, three. I think uh, Michael Moseman yeah. did that and uh, Robbie Wageman. So I think it looks like they cleaned it up a bit. So that's going to be kind of the, the move for the 250 class. Yeah. I tried to go two, three once, but I didn't have the the uh, pop off I saw that, that face case on the left yeah, yeah there's it's really flat face <laughs> so the 450 guys were able to get it done i don't know if we're gonna be able to do that in the 250 class you think you'll try it again hey i mean if uh, <laughs> if i get a good run up why not right <laughs> you know you you know we were down here spying doing a little of our homework yeah. before we got live here and <clears throat> you're good eye on that carson because they actually did change the face of it a little bit the yeah. track work the track team uh, the dirt works crew you know they're not out here trying to they're trying to make the best track possible so they study what happens on press day they study all that and realize yes as you mentioned the face was a little odd i mean some of these have a nice sloping backside so you can land some of them are pretty steep where it makes kind of a if you clip it it's a little bit of a, an issue to getting the drive for the next one and as you, we talked about the three four five variations in height the fives are the ones the fastest riders want to avoid we all think in my mind it's like yes i'm going to do two i'm going to do two the first two you can't even see the number two jump there but i'm going to use the tall three and try to triple and then use the five footer again right, to make to another launch. triple and then so i'm going to use the five footers to get the big launch because if you walk these pace these off the three three threes that you're doing, they're not that far off of what a triple is. A triple, stock triple is around 60, 62, 64 feet. You know, everybody kind of knows that. That's a number everybody's pretty familiar with now. These are not very far off if you're doing triples of right. doing that same distance. A little shorter, but not a whole bunch. Yeah. To me, I want the five footer to do that distance, but the fast, fast guys are using the three footer to do that distance. Yeah, That's they'll crazy. bunny hop that thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So again, yeah, uh, it looked real easy doing the two and then using the five footers for the three, three. But when you get to this end, the last three, you take off on the lowest, the little three footer right here. And Not into a berm. <laughs> and then right here, this is the one that Barsha and some of these guys were hitting and clearing into the tri triple. So then as Carson just mentioned, it's going into a flat corner. It's not like when you hit this thing going as fast as you can, you have a nice bank. You have to land it and negotiate the turn without having a big washout slide out or going too wide. So it's a challenge, another great section. Truly, so far, I'm really excited. This is like my favorite track. I just like the openness, I like the space, I like the speed, I like the, you know, I just, I, I like the whole layout here. So right here, coming off of here, what were you doing here, Carson? Uh, 
But here, we actually had to be a little bit careful. Like, if you're going single out of this, we were going a little bit too far inside and spinning off this face. So oh. it's going to be a little bit tricky coming through here and lining it up every time, especially as it gets a little bit rougher. But I think uh, during practice, I mean, the, the track crew did a really good job, and it looks like it's watered just right, so it should get some good lines. So coming off of this, you're saying it was a little bit slippery. So what were you doing? Like you were doubling right and then yep. hitting the tri then you got a triple a big face we can all see the gigantic face of the triple i mean uh, to me to me obviously a triple like that's you know I, I look at it as one of the hardest obstacles on the track but for the top guys and guys of carson and your ability and all that it's almost a resting area isn't it yeah like you said all these triples are mostly built to spec being you know 60 62 64 feet or whatnot so um you know a lot of guys will jump this on the first lap that they get the chance to so it's not bad. It, like you said, it's breathing room. It's not steep or anything. It, it's not going to have anything weird since uh, they build these to spec. So grabbing a tear off, doing that kind of thing. So, so I, it's really, again, the camera doesn't really tell the distance here, but I'm going to run down and go over to that triple and you're going to probably start realizing how far away and how small I get real quick in the camera, but it's a lot farther and that face is <laughs> darn steep. Yeah, show us Brock. <laughs> Dude, look at how nimble he is. It's like a full-fledged athlete. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Look at how far he is. That is crazy. <laughs> Dude, your little heel clicker? You got it. Oh, <laughs> some freestyle action? Freestyle action there. <laughs> I pulled the muscle. Hey, but it is. It's a long ways. I mean, God, you sit in the stands and, or you sit on TV and you watch these guys race. Yeah. And you're saying, oh, man, why don't they do this? Why don't they do this? I don't, 99.9% .9 of the people right. watching wouldn't do any of these jobs. Just the intimidation <laughs> factor of looking at it alone is oh, enough man. for me to go, yeah, I'm glad I, about I can tell you, I'm happy to be retired. Oh, yeah. It feels good talking about it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Outside, 180, got the safety net, obviously, protect the stands, riders, anything that could happen here. Nice passing opportunity here. This We all love to see the 180s because this is where all the – stuff and happens i mean you know come on we're we're in this sport because it, like, again i always tease people you know nobody's laying on the ground looking for a yellow card you know what <laughs> the hell they kick. this is a, this is a tough sport you know if you're a, if you're faint of heart this ain't this ain't this ain't the sport to go into so right into another what is i mean this year seriously the whoops have been nasty yeah yeah nasty. They, they haven't been afraid to yeah. make them big especially first few rounds they almost never make them very big but yeah. <laughs> they've, they've definitely switched that up this year but it's it's really good for some guys like christian craig he's really good in them yeah. so i mean he's hoping for these uh the big whoops but this set luckily looks like it's only about 10 whoops or so so only yeah, yeah. so it, th this won't be super bad and these ones aren't going to get super cuffed out being uh super hard packed so I think it's going to be good. They're looking pretty steep after the uh, second one here, so it's going to be all about momentum as usual. You mentioned that. I think that's some of everybody's reactions after the first round or two, particularly your first round, that the whoops were so tough, and it's like, boy, there's nothing like being thrown straight into yeah. the fire. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. was, it was like Dirtworks must have had a bad winter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they had a point there's, to prove. Yeah, there's no, yeah. Qu no question that Christian Craig must be sending him a fruit basket for Christmas. Yeah. You know, because, man, he is as good as it gets in the whoops. And there's a couple other riders, obviously, are fantastic. Jason Anderson seems yeah. to be a good whoop rider also. Yeah. And you look and you see the results on the, you know, hey, look who's right up front jason anderson surprised a lot of people this year so maybe mookie i was kind of hoping mookie yeah. he's always had that ability to go through the whoops and this year he's just he's been had some speed i just was hoping to see him get out there maybe this well, is i his think night. yeah actually in phoenix it was a couple years ago when mookie yep. actually went yeah. down through the whoops. Yeah. like i think ever since that crash through the whoops yeah i think he's never well, been the same with commitment no, nah, it's maybe true. I mean, breaking, breaking femur or whatever, but uh, it's a, that's a, a tough injury. So, yeah, it was. You're right here. He had a big one here. We don't need to remind him of that, but yeah. hopefully he'll have a good night tonight. Car Carson, you were talking about the faces. You can come right here. We get a little closer zoom, but you can actually see. Normally, when we kind of look at the whoops, and I understand, but nor there's been some other riders on here not riding at full speed, but normally when we look at the whoops, you see that the tires are about right here. You don't see them dropping down in as low as you see right here. And again, here also, up here. And you can see these are really inconsistent across the tops here. Yeah, so we normally don't see 
this kind of kind of action on the base of the whoops because the, the wheels are never getting down that low so the tires never digging at the face down that low these the riders are dropping in a lot farther yes. than they normally do so they're way the more spaced step. apart than the here other in, little inconsistent across and they just yeah even this one here a lot of the riders are going a little to the left you know just because they're not able to hold the hold the line going straight through them yeah, these are these are nasty so be watching tonight there's going to be some definite action here this is going to be a real could be a real big deciding factor for tonight's race Absolutely. off into yep once you make it all the way through the last one's got a big kicker in it through the 180 off the double and comes right back down and enters the start where we started this whole track walk some while back and it's uh it's another little slight resting area as you lead into that first corner there. But man, Carson, thank and you for joining us. Thank you very thank you much for all your fans for voting. That yeah. was fantastic. And hey, sixth place last week. I'd like to see another top ten. Of course, you'd like to move up. But hey, if you can just yeah. get another position like that, fantastic. that was a fan fantastic privateer of effort there. So good job, brother. Yeah, thank you guys very much for having me on. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. good. And thank you guys for voting yeah. to where we could have Carson on. Yep. So thank you very much and uh, watching the track walk by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. So we'll see you next week in Anaheim again. Thanks.